This is Connor Sinclair with Comcast number 10 on August 10th. Uh, today's subject, the Gantaro. In English, that means the big fat gold. It's all CT, so let's talk about the hitboxes of the of the Golden Boy here. Uh, today's we've got Laser Angel. Hello, guys. It's Laser Angel again. Kalis. This is Kalis. Visajo Rain. As always. Malfs. What's up? Raccoon. Yep. Josie. Hello. And Valerie. You suck and I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you guys think? Um, I've got a prediction with the uh, new Kataro here. The reason I think it's mainly CT is because they're talking about medium buffs, and I think they're going to level out the engine restrictions. I think they're going to lift them. So does anybody got anything to say on that? Bass? Yeah, I think you're out of your mind. That's, that sounds like a lot of work. They would have to rebalance all the mechs if they were that. Kalos? Looking at the Kentaro, uh, it does have the big CT. That does give it an advantage of letting it use an XL for basically free. Um, so maybe it's a balancing thing to try to open it up. But they do still get that plus 10% because of the, um, the missile bay. So Yes. I don't know. It's it's an interesting mech, but it is a uh, it's weakened on its engine. But you know they did that on purpose because it's a hero mech. Visajo. Yeah, my biggest problem right now is with the Golden Boy itself. Kintaro number eighteen looks. It looks like it could be a good suicide bomber. The others not so much. They're very quick draw syndrome like. But oh man, you people who bought the Golden Boy, I feel for you. I I really do. Alas. Uh, another thing I wanted to bring up about the Kentaro, um, specifically, I've lo- loved FD's art up until this point. Uh, his mechs and his designs are amazing. However, I think this one doesn't really pull much from the original. It, it, it looks very generic. It looks very like other mechs. It's And it kind of bugs me because of that. Well, there's that... Basically, that belief everybody thinks that it's using the same skeleton. Valkyrie? I wanted to bring up something that Haruko mentioned in uh, our thread. She said that she thinks that the mechs are now being balanced, or not being balanced, they're being scaled depending on missile um, hardpoint sizes. Because if you've noticed, ever since, ever since we started getting you know new mechs, I think the Highlander was the first one, um, depending on how many missiles you put on it, you know anywhere from an SRM-2 up to an LRM-20, it started getting bigger missile boxes to accommodate it. And the Kentaro is fucking all missiles. And as a result, they basically had to upscale it because otherwise you'd have you'd put LRM-20s on a Kentaro and it would be suddenly way smaller than the LRM-20s on something like a Trebuchet or a Highlander, which is really kind of weird. Well, there's also the fact that uh, some people believe that their skeletons are being reused. Like on like the Quick Draw, the Victor, and the Kentaro. They sort of have that that you know you can the same. Yeah, you can mistake them for a Centurion or something because they look all alike and they kind of move alike. So, Most of them move. We're wondering that's if me. maybe that's why there's scaling issues. Is because they're just reusing the skeleton. We probably will never know. We exactly won't know what's going on. But it, you know, it's kind of a funny theory. Halus. Yeah, uh, one of our own, uh, our Alex Wolf, our prophet. He. Uh, knows a little bit of kanji, and he wanted to point something out about how it was written on the Kintaro, or sorry, the Golden Boy itself. Um, essentially, the gold letters on it means, uh, I don't have all the words here in front of me, but it stands for Golden Boy, and it's a very specific symbol in the Japanese uh, Maitoi. Now, the symbol that's really big and in the middle is called, it says fat. That's what it means, the kanji. <laughs> <laughs> the issue with this is, uh, as he described, it's like taking Superman, and instead, and ta- instead of taking the recognizable S, they're putting Superman. And it, it's just, it's kind of insulting and not very <laughs> well designed. I, I'm probably describing it poorly, because I only him? have a... Oh, the part where they're running around with a sign that says "Big Fat Gold" on themselves. 
That was I can't hear beautiful. Yeah. For those of you who aren't familiar, we tend to call people who, you, because of who people who bought the legendary founders packs, we call them the golds, and we generally make fun of them for having poor financial it's decisions. A bit more so this is kind of that, funny. But... Yeah. Well, it's not Most... just poor financial decisions. It's the fact that they have to justify their purchase. It's the fact that they're so steadfast in defending PGI and every single thing that you possibly do. Right. So work. to have a mech that literally says big fat gold on it, and the fact that it's got like a gigantic CT that just absorbs damage. I mean, sure, it's got the XL proofness, but still. That's fantastic. So it's, it's a nice little joke. It's like, hey, look at me. I'm a big fat gold, and I bought this. Uh, Vass? Yeah, it's, uh, if you think about it, this is a very battle tech. Same reasons as the old shit was so offensive and stereotyped. People don't know any better. Or may- maybe it's maybe it's an in joke from their from their side. Who knows? Maybe PGI has this all figured out. Maybe. Maybe. Potentially. Maybe. Um. So we. So twelve and twelve is twelve and twelve has gone live, and oh. I think everybody's finally gotten used to the maps and everything, and we can all safely say that everything is a clusterfuck. Quite literally, yeah, I kind of uh, like it. A lot of the smaller maps are just—they're just way too damn small for the action that's going on. Raccoon. Uh yeah. Okay. For a while, or rather, maybe the entire time this game's been around, brawling has kind of been on the decline. The main problem with the maps is that they're too small, and it doesn't really gratify All playing right, smart. This? Yeah, yeah, you're I fine. Agree. But uh. The funny thing about 12v12 is that it goes either way. You can totally get your shit stomped in by a 12-man ridge-humping team, but because there's so many more mechs, it actually allows you to get into brawling range easier because there's other dudes that end up getting shot at. But there's also issues like the fact that you might be a group of four people, and before, all you had to do was carry the other half of your team, since ELO is so broken and you can't seem to get the right players. Now, with 12v12, you are carrying double the amount of idiots. There are some matches where I am the only one getting double digits or triple digits, and everyone else is still suck, stuck in single digits. Eight players, in a, anything from an assault, medium, light, to heavy, anything. Pop-Tart or Ridge Humper, Standard Brawler or Harasser, and they're not doing any damage. So it's like you are constantly... They've shifted the load. You're carrying more now than you carried before. And it, it's, it hurts sometimes when you get those bad players. All the fucking time. Yeah. Laser? I've noticed that as a lance, you really have to operate more as a specialized lance, and you can't just carry the other four players. Like in a couple matches with you on Alpine, you had the ERPPCs, I had the LRMs, and Vass had the ECM. And we split off as sort of the ranged lance, and you kept taking pop shots at, around the corner with the, your PPCs, and then finally the, the other guys brawling finally move up. And they move up, and then they get they get scared off, and then Vass yells at them, get in range, go in there. <laughs> oh, yeah, Vass like hurt, like just like they said in the chat, hurt. It's like hurting cats. Vass just like yells at the team, and they finally push in there. Then our lance pushes up as there's brawling Covers going on. They kill people. Yeah, we covered them. Yeah, it works. It's just that you literally need to set up yourself. You need to have a brawling lance. You need to have sort of a skirmishing, maybe medium range lance, and you need to have your sniper lance. And each. One needs to do their jobs. You need to have the one lance to flank, one lance to harass, and one lance to sort of go in there and just face fuck them with SRMs and lasers and AC-20s while then the the, the the sniper lance pulls in as well. Okay, Kalis? I had uh, two points I wanted to address about 12v12. Firstly, the maps. Um, Forest Colony is a terrible, horrible clusterfuck. It's too no, it small. has been. No, no, but it's even worse now. Because there's so bad. eight more assholes on the field that you have Oof. to worry about. And it's just it's just a big grinder. It, it, there's no more tactics anymore. It's push forward, grind, grind, and there's really nothing you can do about it. The other thing I wanted to address is if you go in with anything less than a lance, anything less than four mechs, you are, in my opinion, completely worthless. You can't do anything with less than four mechs. And even four mechs, you're hard-pressed. Because there's 12 on each side now. You can't hold a line. You can't push a line. You can't flank very well. Um, There's just so much you can't accomplish when you're busting out with 
just two people or three people. You can't do anything because not only are you dealing with, you know, your puppies, you're dealing with even more puppies than you dealt with previously. So if you have just another guy you're uh, rolling with, you have 10 people you have to worry about. And a lot of the times they just get in the way, they mill about, and they kind of cluster together and they just get shot up. Or they it's... lurk behind you and pin you in place. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so lovely. much. Yes, I love that. It, or it's... they get in... Or they get in That's your the way. That's the best thing cause... you can do for your buddy. Just give him the old Christian back hug. You've got, uh... like, say, a stalker, and he only has two medium lasers, and he's put all of his tonnage in LRMs. And he's right behind you, and you're hugging this guy, and you're about to kill him off. He, of course, walks right in, in between you and him and attempts to hug him with two medium lasers. And you're like, what are you doing? Well, the main problem with this issue is we only have half-baked organizational tools. We don't have any voice macros to tell people no what voice to shoot macros. At. We have the no VOIP. Yeah, nope. and the uh, Lance tools are they're half-baked at best. They're so primitive. Yes, they don't really. They're not advanced enough to give us the tools we need to organize in a way because we need to organize into lances now. You, you have can't to. even draw on the screen. Something you can't been in a lot do of the games. twelve person death ball. Everybody runs into each other. It just doesn't work. And if you attempt the twelve person death ball, and there actually is combat between twelve mechs, and they're looking at each other, half of the lance disconnects on either team. So for those of you Wait, who what? are pulling less than a lance out, you're rolling the dice. Yeah. You can't affect the combat. You can get a thousand damage, and you're still not going uh, to affect the combat. It's just I'll, not I'll work. interject on this very quickly. Uh, solo players need not apply this patch at all. So do something else. Just save yourself the headache. Find another do game. It. Just go. Yeah, whatever. Do something. Or Don't find friends. Grow, <laughs> grow bonsai trees. Anything. Join this Kong. No solo players. <laughs> <laughs> Val, uh, you I was going to say, one of the things I do kind of miss from... Uh, the knockdown days, although I guess it was, again, it's one of those very, very light silver linings that I remember because I remember getting knocked down all the goddamn time by other people, too. But I do love, I used to love in the knockdown days how there would be a stupid goddamn Jenner standing in the way, and I'm in my hunchback calling as much ass as I possibly can because I've got an atlas behind me or something, and I just go and slam him to the fucking ground. It's just straight up, get the fuck out of my way! Fucking 50-ton hunchback coming through, and boop! Jenner goes out of the way, no problems. For a while, we still had that, too, where you could kind of clip through them, but now it's just like, ah, shit. And speaking of hunchbacks, they're extremely worthless in 12v12 now. I don't think I heard you, you guys talk say. about it, but ammunition. If you don't run energy weapons, you're screwed now, because there's not nearly enough ammo in those AC-20s to keep them firing for the rest of the game. Okay, laser. I just wanted to say on this little last note here that uh, even up until this point, out this long after the patch, you'll see people live in the game asking, uh, is there like a special 8 versus 8 queue I don't want to play in 12 versus 12? And I, every couple of matches, I'll see people asking if there's actually a, a specific 8 versus 8 queue that they're missing out on. Or you'll see people dropping out of Alpine or Terra Therma, because it would seem that these large maps that are supposed to be fun with 12v12 aren't. You do the same thing you would have done in 8v8. So, no one... You know, these large maps, this experiment with 12v12, complete failure. Um, I guess we'll move on to the next topic. Uh, we got Kalis, one last thing. Oh, well, he's got... Uh, okay. Yeah, I just wanted to mention one last thing. One of the issues we have with 12v12 is the fact they never gave us the tools for 12v12 to work properly. The time to kill is far too fast, and we're not carrying enough ammo, so ballistics and missile-based weapons are put at a further disadvantage from energy-based weapons. That is a big issue that they need to address. Well, luckily, I know Garth said that he was going to try and get them to give us a little more energy, or a little more ammunition for ballistic and missile weapons, but it's Garth. He doesn't really have a lot of pull, to be perfectly no. honest, so I, he I suggested that. Like, yeah, you know uh, Garth suggested 225 missiles. I'm not sure if he meant for LRMs or SRMs, and then we also discussed uh, increasing autocannon ammo. Autocannons need to go straight double, maybe not in the Gauss, though, and... On top of that, increasing the Gauss recycle time from 4 seconds to 5 seconds. This is one of those few times where uh, Paul's ghost math would actually actually be worth. If they ghost increased the uh, ammunition on most of the weapons, like the AC-20, you get a .5. So if you get 
two, you get the bonus extra AC-20 rounds. If they did that to ammo, it'd be great. Because then, like, a two or three space of ammo would be a larger ammo bin. Okay, Vass? Uh, you wanted to cover what I was going to say, so I'll pass it on to Mouth. All right, to me, Mouth? I'm a big autocannon player, and for me, the issue is not ammo. It shouldn't be ammo. The issue is hit registration. I will fire at a <laughs> Jenner S over there. Oh, hello. You're running in front of my lanch. I'm going to leg you. I spend 20 shots at this Jenner. So nope, many of them miss. Gonna happen. They gotta That's fix the hit Jenner registration says. and then give us more ammo. Moving on. All I right. just want to say something real quick. They're not going to change ammo because they're going to assume that everyone on the team is a team player, and so you can still use the same ammo to kill the same amount of mechs, hoping that the rest of your team will work together to kill the others. Without the tools to be a team. Unfortunately, <laughs> right. isn't, yeah, that, isn't that the same line of logic that made Paul reduce income? That same yeah. worthless line of logic? Well, let's, But that's another segment. That's a little bit later. Yeah, we'll get that. <laughs> Raccoon, what have you got? Uh, more with the uh, hit registration issues, I have noticed, and this confuses the hell out of me. Um, wait, we're on 12v12 or hit registration? Hit registration. It's a subtopic, so talk All about right. hit reg. Well, I've noticed that with LRMs, I will have lock on a, on a dude. The entire time the LRMs are flying towards target, sometimes they'll hit and I will get no damage whatsoever. Other times, they will just stop tracking even though I have lock the entire time, and they'll just plow into the ground as the guy moves away. Magic. Get your crosshair. Now that what happens on the screen. The crosshair is red. Very good, if not. And yeah, a lot of weapons have been doing that for a long time. Um, we have to move on Get with that with PPCs yeah. a lot. Freaking. Alright, so let's talk about energy weapons. Uh, the ER large laser kind of has a use now. It's it's gotten pretty good. Laser fucking haters. Yeah, um, I've been sort of preparing on the ER large laser for a long time, and it is 8.5 heat. It is cooler than the PPC. You can hit out to 1350 meters and tickle people. Uh, you slap a BAP, and your sensor module you can see them if they aren't under ECM out to 1250. So you are firing your long-range weapons at long range continuously for long periods of time, and you'll probably slowly close in to about 1,000 meters where everyone else can start shooting. But yeah, ER large laser, for me, has completely replaced my large lasers. Kayless? Well, uh, as someone who drives the Misery, I did have to change it around a while before. I had a, my build was two ER PPCs, uh, one PPC and a DOS rifle. Uh, as of currently... The ERPCs, or the ERPPCs, are completely untenable. They're just not usable whatsoever. They, they take way too long. Uh, it was take me up to 37% heat for firing two of them. So they're effectively shelved at this point. Unfortunately, that's just how it's going to be, because everybody's terrified of them. Right. Um, I've been noticing that for most pop darters, though, they're fine. Nothing. Of course. Nothing. Of course. Nothing's hard. They only him. use two. Yeah. My God. Who would have guessed? I know. Uh, let's talk about pulse lasers. Uh, we're still waiting on whatever the hell they're going to do with pulse lasers. Did they modify? I think they modified the duration on mediums, didn't they, Vass? Yeah. I think it was they, a large. They, they changed the large. a lot. The, mediums the and large. There is... They changed a whole bunch of them to try and bring them in line to a standard. Yeah, but the point is, are you going to spend up to twice the tonnage for something that that tiny of a damage increase? Yeah. Honestly, no. if they make it no. to large pulse lasers being like laser In cannonballs, then I would put those on my cicada. Larges do like 10.5 now, don't they? Yes, but so does the PPC something. and, yeah. you know, you know um, what I'm getting at. They still need to de decrease the duration and then... And then increase uh, or decrease the heat, and then increase the recycle or decrease the recycle. They need to make it fast fire. The recycle definitely. needs to be definitely brought down. Oh yeah, it needs recycle to... and the beam duration and the damage. I'll need to be looked. I said yeah, this back in close beta. To... Yeah, 
I said this back in close beta. They should it, have been. They need to be laser machine placing. guns. It basically needs to get for the large, the large pulse laser. It basically needs to be more DPS, with, more DPS than the PPC does, but with a significant cut to range and heat. It oh, has yeah. heat efficiency so. rather. I just it want needs... the LPL to be a laser boom box. It needs to be you absolutely terrifying in close range. You, we're talking. It needs to be a serious siege weapon in close range. It has to be almost like an auto cannon at point blank, like maybe an AC twenty or something. Well, maybe not an AC twenty, but still. Okay, let's move on to critical damage changes. The LBX ten, <laughs> the Mamer of Worlds, Lumber Giga has returned. Fast. Yeah, I've been playing around with LB10 a lot. It's it's kind of good now. Well, it depends on your dice rolls, rather. First you have to do the hits, and then you have to get the criticals. Kind of tricky, but when you hit something, you can sometimes bring people down in like one or two blasts now. Obviously, hey, yeah. Go on. Uh, I have uh, been testing both weapons pretty extensively in testing grounds and during play, um, specifically with my Jägermeck DD. And I can tell you something, if you take six machine guns on a DD, and if the outer armor is missing from that part, you can kill that part within about two to three seconds. Atlas Definitely. notwithstanding. I, I have done an amazing amount of damage taking mechs down that are only slightly damaged with the machine guns right now. They're incredibly dangerous. And the LB-10X is just as dangerous, but you have to crack the shell. you got to poke first. But beyond that, uh, that's the new meta right now, and they're dangerous. Okay, Raccoon? Uh, yeah, I've been messing around with the LBX-10 ever since uh, I realized it was in the game, and uh, I ran a build like you had, Connor, with the two LBX-10s back, you know, like six months ago or whatever, and I always wished that it was something like what it was today. And now we have it. It's a fucking full-on beast mode, and it's actually worth the 800k it costs to put the fucking gun on your mech. Yeah, right? A gun that's useful and actually has a role? It's still just a bug. Bounce. You all laughed at the standard machine guns on the Mad Cat. Now they'll be the ones laughing at you. Dude, Paul's build <laughs> works now. I love it now. when the machine guns work Paul's like this. Paul's build works now. It's it dangerous. It works a great deal. <laughs> yes, it is. I actually kind of like where machine guns now. I think they should stay. And I think they should Oh, yeah, out. definitely. It makes I think the they should... Raven 4X something somewhat yeah. viable now. It might be a little too much, though. The Raven yeah. 4X would be viable if it weren't for the fact that 12v12 means it gets insta-gibbed. Yeah. The machine gun spider. You just gotta know how to use the jump jets and jump around terror. the map. If you're an Atlas and you have a popped open section or something, and then a, a machine gun find spider it. rolls by, he's gonna come by. He's gonna find it and he's gonna bite at that wound, and it's gonna suck. Laser. Um, I know a couple of days ago we had a Kong four man of machine gun spiders getting like four to five to six kills per match just because they would tear up anything that was opened. They would slice any wounded mech and take it down completely. So it's a bit... It's cool, but I still think it's a bit too much. They need to reduce that 15% critical damage gets passed on to the internal structure down to maybe 10 or 5%. Five. Bass? Yeah, before anyone gets any funny ideas, this is very much an unintended feature, a.k.a. a fucking bug. Will be looked at sometime soon, eventually, maybe. They consider making it permanent, but with the way you guys probably raped Matt will. Newman, I don't know if they're gonna want to keep it. But I <laughs> we'll like see. it. I like it. I like it's, a, it's a nice. Make it taste. permanent, but lower down the transfer damage because it's a bit too high now. Yeah, transfer damage. Pop, is, like popping max in crit three damage is fucking. It amazing. rapes too fast. I'm it telling needs to rape you, man. A bit slower. <laughs> the Jaeger <laughs> Mech DD wrong. with six machine guns rapes. If you have no armor, you're losing whatever it is. It doesn't. It reminds matter. me. I need to. I need to try my uh, twin OBX four MG Jaeger Mechs again. Cause I, I need to try my with that even before the buff. The problem with that is that you have to use the XL. And Jaeger mix with XLs are kind of sad. Yeah, but yeah. yeah. Uh, I guess we're going to move on to the next topic. With the LBX, we've been able to actually avoid this, but it's still a huge issue. And that is the recession, the new economy. We're earning a lot less. 
I thought they we were we were, we got nerfed when they did the uh, savior kill. And to be honest, yeah, it kind of was. Sometimes you get lucky with the saviors, but usually not so much. Now with the more with the bigger adjustments they've made because of the twelve v twelve, we're really tightening our belts when it comes to what we purchase. Kalis? Well, as um, I have a hero mech. And I got the first match, I made 638 damage. I had 4 kills, 6 assists. That's a pretty good match by pretty much any imagine. Maybe you're better than me. But I made 135k. That is <laughs> That's horrible. Pretty... That's how much you used to make in a normal mech. In That's a hero mech out of a really decent match, honestly. But, oh, one thing about the machine gun, um, if you use those, you get a lot of component kills, so you do make a little bit more cash. <laughs> so yeah, you do. You can go that route as well. Funnily enough. The best I've done so far on 12v12 was six kills and, like, I don't know, eight assists, and it was with twin LBX-10s and an Atlas, and I had another Atlas with me backing me up with twin LBX, and I got 220k, and I killed half of the team. I'm. I still. I'm not. I'm not. I can't take this economy at all. Uh, Vass. Yeah, I'm uh, talking about big numbers. Uh, the biggest income I've made so far, and I know the tricks to farm, is 270k. I think that's approaching the limit. What you're gonna make right now? That's not good enough. That's what people with Hero Max used to make before. I haven't really been keeping track of my money making, so no comment. Caps, you got something to say? Yeah, well, I got the impression that this new patch and new economy really punishes bad players, while like good players are doing as good as with the 8v8 drops. They make as much money, while bad players make way less doesn't matter if you win or lose, at least from my perspective. And that's kind of bringing to the point that this game isn't really beginner-friendly and now you got uh, no money to buy another mech or to buy any uh, weapons or anything or any upgrades. It's really, really bad decision from PGI again. Okay, Malfs? Uh You mentioned something about anyone who checked their currency gain before. I used to roll with Kong a long time ago, back before I had my 3M bought out, and I would monitor my income like a rabid dog. You would make on average 120 to 130k on a decent round in a normal mech. So what you're getting now in a premium mech is what used to be the standard. Right, and it mm -hmm. kills me because Paul said on the IGP stream that this economy felt about right. They're increasing the grind by a great deal, where normally you might earn a million or so, and in an hour we're earning even we're earning about I'll maybe think. enough to get one component an, an hour. And that's if you're just doing lucky drops. I'm trying to think here the other bit I wanted to add on. Oh, your premium time. Because of this, they're also cutting in onto your premium time. And I know a lot of people are still sitting on theirs. And yes. now, now Guilty. Yeah, it's even guilty. worth less now. It's even worth. Yeah, I'm guilty. It's even worth less now. So they're hurting people who've paid. Uh, I'm glad I burned mine. Yeah, I I wish I did way back when we still had a decent economy. Uh, you you bad people. Salvage bad people. I think is okay, but for the most part, it's useless. It mainly comes down to. Uh, uh, it's actually split between four more people now. Yeah, you have to share yes. your salvage with more people. Who would have thought? It's not like you could claim the salvage when you got it. it dibs on the XL. Yeah, yeah, you don't get dibs so much. <laughs> so, and even with the first match of the day XP bonus, it's because you could have a match, drop in, and then you'll have four Ravens on your team, and they'll go cap, and you get what? <laughs> uh, just a hundred bonus oh XP God, and yeah. waste your win. So useless. What they should have done is a bonus C bill for the day or something. And Wouldn't made have done it... a lot if people go cap anyway. And but made you know, it as you your top match. This. We knew this all along. God. At least a try. I mean, even with the increased capture time. Uh, Kalis? 
just looking at a, a nice long look at some numbers, um, on average, most people are earning probably about 30% less. And when you're looking at that, most people are probably earning anywhere from 70 to 130 k Average, depending on no hero mech, just no premium, nothing like that. So if your average player comes in, he's looking at 100 to 130 matches if he wants to get an atlas. And that's not with upgrades. That's some food for thought. Just think yeah. about that for a minute. No, don't forget the times when he gets capped out or he just doesn't make any money whatsoever. Exactly, yeah. You might be making 25 k <laughs> So you could be looking anywhere from 100 to maybe even 150 matches. The funny thing... Just for with... one atlas. The funny thing with the way this game does its economics... Every build is going to cost you generally about $15 million. Any build. Anywhere from a Raven 3L, a 6 medium laser Jenner, DOS, uh, Catapult, uh, anything is going to cost you 10 to $15 million. Well, or not just that. It's going to cost about $15 million. It's going to cost $10 million for the mech. Then an additional $5 million if you're building a very solid basic build. And then 18 if you're building meta. I would like to call it not a solid mech, but more the gold standard. What do what you think of when someone talks about assaults? Do you think about the classic DDC or... With two medium lasers. lasers? AC-20, two mediums, three SRM-6s. Yeah. That's what I think. Yeah. Your classic DDC is almost going to be upwards of almost 20 million. You got a it lot eight, to buy. 18 million for one of those. And we're That's not even, a lot now. We're not even approaching clan tech yet. Which... So you're talking almost 200... Maybe fifty matches before you're able to afford a fully decked out DDC. Exactly. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and that's and the matches are longer too. Right? The matches are longer now too. Remember yeah. that. Your income is even slower. In the clan tech, uh, general your 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 standard Mad Cat is going to be what is it like uh, twenty five million? Twenty five. And then if you do a day sheet, and if you do like a, just a standard basic day sheet. No, forty million. Just forty yeah. million. No upgrades. No, no, no upgrades. Eighty dollars an MC. <laughs> Eighty dollars an MC. A hundred dollar <laughs> pixel. Grab deal. <laughs> I know people who would. That I know. Would. Well, those those are good looking Max. Uh, Raccoon. Yeah. Last yeah, this bit. is something I've been harping on ever since closed beta. PGI isn't even. Uh, they're not even clever with how they just nickel and dime you to death with either through MC or C bills. Because you can't buy a mech, just the chassis. You gotta get the fucking stupid ass engine it comes with that you don't want. You gotta get all the weapons that it comes with that you don't want and all that shit. And every mech Forget. requires at least like a $2 million down payment to be viable after you buy it. You need endo the one and for double heat. You heat need heat. endo. Yeah, you need all that shit. Otherwise, you can't fucking do anything. This is how fucked up the economy is. I have to make a new account every time I want to buy a new mech so I can grind the cadet bonus. Otherwise, it's going to take me 100 fucking matches. I'm never going to get speed tweak on my atlas cuz that's like five, that's going to be 50 mil. I can't do that. Well, don't worry. The cadet bonus is going away. You won't have that problem any longer. <laughs> oh, wonderful. <laughs> oh, don't forget about the main yeah. launcher and all the lovely ads for camo you don't care about. Yeah. Buy now. Fit the MC. How about no? You crazy like Canadian the bastards. are fucked up. Yeah. Would you like to... the price I will finish thing. this segment uh, by talking about salvage. Most people don't get it. When you kill a mech, if you do little damage, you get a bunch of percentage of what that mech was worth. So if you nuke my DDC by legging it, you make a fuck ton of money. This is how you make the big money. Salvage, the way it works now, is heavily reduced in uh, the way you make it to begin with. And you have four more players to split it between. So the main source of income for those of us who know what we're doing, which was salvage, is it's down the shitter. Even people like me who know how to farm in this game, we aren't making a lot of money either. We have to tighten the belt too. Next thing we've got here is the MechWarrior Online technical update. And it basically includes a lot of things you may have forgotten about, as well as things that you're interested in and hope come to be about but may not. 
First one is stability, which makes me laugh. Now, they did increase the stability here recently. PGI did a very good thing. They increased FPS very well. Kalis, want to take this away? Yeah, we're talking about the technical update that Matthew Craig sent out. Now, he posted a lot of information, which is good. We like information. However, we have to break down this information and see how it affects us. Um, They're talking about their core pillars uh, that run up to launch. Uh, namely, their stability, their customer support, their performance, their mech movement, firing, DX11, UI 2.0, and gameplay. So there's a lot to cover here, but we'll get through it. So um, they set up the public test servers, as we all know, um, and it says they say that they're uh, accomplishing a lot of stuff with this. Uh, they're able to test all their features and see what happens from the community thing. What this also lets them do is see what happens in a big form, because as we've seen time and time again, they introduce big features, and we find things that should have been caught within 10 minutes of playing a match. And this gives them that opportunity, which is a really good thing. Um, As far as that goes, uh, it lets them find these uh, issues, and they say that their 12v12 test went very well. Now, I think they pushed it out a little too early, but that's what they chose to do, and they did fix it a bit. It wor- runs fairly well now. Going further down, um, they're working on their automated testing tools. Um, that's the stuff that uh, allows them to... Uh, it lets them do uh, customer uh, support tools. like uh, They can observe matches and catch people cheating and things like that. Meaning Helps them police before... the community. Meaning before when there were reports, they couldn't tell what was going on at all. No, they were guessing. They were relying uh, primarily on um, people Green reporting shots, issues. Exactly. Reportings. That's it. And they were going over it manually, or which is word a terrible of mouth. way. He of says, doing. she yes. says, yes. Exactly. Which um, means you could get report bombed. So speaking about that, uh, what do you have to say about that, Rickum? I kind of got two things. Some with the testing and some with how they do their report thing. I'll go with the testing first. Uh, I really insist that they, the, their testers, their dev team, I don't think they know how to play their own game. I think they're usually testing with just stock, yeah, testers, quote unquote. But, you know, I, I just wanted to harp on that. With the uh, report thing, I'll give an example of how messed up it is. I got reported, and then one of the reasons I was banned was because I said, and I quote, single heat sinks suck total dick, but I said that <laughs> in Lance chat in one of our formans, I believe. So I said that to you guys, and I got in trouble for it. Yeah, nobody reported that. Wow. All right, and um, Mal, so you had something to say about what we were talking about? Yeah. They're supposed to be doing something involving fixing the FPS, but it's inexplicable how it was getting 50, 60 frames, like, not even two or three patches ago, and now it's back to, like, the 15, 20 FPS every time I try to move around. Well, we're going to get back into frames a little bit later. We're specifically talking about the technical update as far as stability goes in the 12v12. That's never going to stop bothering me, by the way. I can't aim like this. <laughs> <laughs> I, of course. I know that feel. Well, next, uh, we're going to move on to customer support. Uh, they said they streamlined their internal process for monitoring support tickets. In other words, they actually have a support ticket system now. It's not just emails that are forwarded on. That's a good thing. That gives the developers actual information and data they can use. More telemetries for them to use. It kind of kills me they didn't have this stuff before. I mean, you this should need been this to develop. This should have been from beta Day on. one. Yeah. Yes. Most companies have this in from... Uh, beta on it's built in it's something you have to do but they had none of this built because it was well they came in real late and they pushed it out as fast as they could i'll interject quickly before careless gets to continue uh i'm not good at this whole beta test thing i've never been in an actual beta before but isn't it kind of silly to try and do a beta test without you know tools for checking all the things the people are reporting I don't, I don't get it. You should have built the tools right away. <laughs> it should have been in from day one. Yeah. But what are you going to do? 
Ricky, yeah. you had something to say about this? Yeah, this is more with like what Vass said about the beta testing. Uh, not to brag, but I have played lots of betas because oh, free game. This is easily one of the shittiest betas I've ever been a part of. The dev team is incompetent. They don't know what's going on half the time. Uh, it's impossible to actually tell anyone about any kind of error or problem you have with the game because this is what you'll get. It's a beta. Yeah, there's That's no. That's why I'm fucking telling you. There's no bug reporting system. Uh, there was no surefire way for them to even control or interact with the game environment. It's just impossible. Mouths? You know, someone mentioned that this is more like an alpha, and I've tested a few alphas actually just recently. There's been a few coming out here and there. And the like the baseline feeling from playing an alpha game is kind of there. I, Val? I, I, I want to be nice about that. Remember when Arma 3 Alpha came out and they charged you $32 to get in and then they slowly started to take things away and the game looked worse and worse? Oh, wait, that didn't happen! It got better because fucking Bohemia knows what the fuck they're doing and they know what a game is actually a beta. <gasps> no way. Well, <laughs> well, you know, speaking I'm about not knowing what they're doing, um, back to PGI. Now they actually have tools they can monitor people they can watch you and they can see what you uh, write. So oh, now watching they can. Me. Yes. Now they can do their job properly. So like moving on from there. <laughs> as far as performance goes, uh, they're talking about how part of their goal with 12v12 has been to ensure that the performance doesn't decline with the introduction of eight new mechs. Now we know when they first introduced it, it obviously did decline. And they made various optimizations, well, which we'll get into a little bit later. But um, they're also tightening up their internal workflows for new assets and maps, which means they've found better processes to do it, and they're going to be able to push content out a little bit faster. We don't know if that's actual reality or not, but this is what they have told us, so we have to believe them. Let's not, and say we did. I will say, since the 12 vs. 12 came out, I have noticed a significant drop in my FPS. Well, yeah, we're, we're, we'll get to that. That's a little bit later. Uh, matchmaking. They have been monitoring the telemetry data for the matchmaker for a while now. <laughs> There's that word. And, and they feel that he uses the Have they now? Report. I told and they you feel to stop making up words. And they feel they have enough data to begin tuning the system to help reduce the outlier games that either have poor weight matching or poor ELO matching. <laughs> oh, so they're... I can't say this, this with is, a straight face. This is an admission that ELO has been broken. They know that, uh, in general, that these represent a relatively small percentage of games. But they are frustrating when they occur and often represent a game where the odds are noticeably in favor of one side. Now... Anybody who has played this game for more than a week knows that matchmaking is just awful. Weight tuning or weight matching doesn't work, and you're often thrown in with people that are off your elo. It's just ridiculous. And now they're waiting for the introduction of 12v12 to ensure they're balancing the system for the correct number of players. Now, uh. what you have to understand about this, this statement says a lot. This tells you that they have not tested with 12v12 in ELO. They completely... They've had 12v12 for a long time, but now they had to wait for it to go live before they can actually test it with 12v12. That's a bad, bad thing. That means they do no testing on this particular. Riku, you had something to say? Yeah, I mean, uh, back to what you said, uh, ELO has been fucked ever since it was a thing, and I don't, I'm not entirely sure, but I assume it was a thing ever since closed beta. So no. It just stinks. No, it was right, added it in a lot more recently. It was January. Uh, okay. Well, February. it stands to reason that if they fuck up ELO with 8 vs. 8 and tonnage and whatnot, they're going to fuck it up even worse with 12v12. It, it's, it's possible. I mean, we just got to see what's going to happen. I mean, we got to play a wait-and-see approach with PGI. But even if also... we don't want to, we have to wait now because, hey, we just got the live 12v12. Now they have real telemetry. Apparently fake telemetry doesn't work. <laughs> so, yes. um... Oh. 
They said the only differences to the community would be the average time to find a match. Now, we know from, I believe, Paul's post that, um, yes, in the ATD, that they eight mans fail 25 to 30 percent of the time. Does anybody want to hazard a guess how many, how much uh, failure percentage that 12v12 is going to do? That's four more people you have to wrangle together. From uh, Kong's point of view, it took us a half an hour to get one going. No, it took longer than that. Half an hour was just getting everyone ready when we were in. It yes. took about two to three right. hours just to get all the fucking people. It was a nightmare, because getting that many people on one page can be very was difficult sometimes. Was that when Dashing was trying really hard to get a 12-man going, and then he wasn't a part of his own 12-man? Yeah. It was also was when we shame. crashed, because we're all brawlers, and what did oh, we do? Yeah, I remember. We attempted to brawl a 12-man and lost half the team. Like three times, and it just wasn't worth it. So what I get from this is that if you get into a 12v12, be le- consider yourself lucky because it's probably going to fail a lot. Because getting another 12 people against your 12 people, you're not going to see very often. So moving on from there, uh, they talked about mech movement and how they're laying down the foundations for mech movement and the recent changes. Oh specifically boy. going up and down hills. Um, they, they, it's more in a complete state now, and they only need a few small refinements and some what? maps where their art intern is working on it. <laughs> this is what they said. Their art intern is working intern? on the little parts of the map. God. They have an intern working on that this. They master. have an intern working there's on this. I'm glad the little parts they got work on it's a, a sketch, It's a sketch artist modeling. We're in good hands. He, fucking he's, intern. He's oh. flattening out the bad spots that catch you, and all those little dealies within the maps and such. How about removing the movement nerf that just doesn't work, and then putting in something that's a little bit more refined? They're not going to get rid of it. They're screwed. Uh, well, we'll get on to that. So, next we have mech firing, and uh, they've recently finished the work implementing host state rewind for all weapon types. <laughs> a good... Mm-hmm. It like worked. You... It did work. It was working when it really was good. Implemented, and then they but broke then it. Then they broke it again, and, and spiders nothing... are and things are worse. sometimes. Some mechs but... are hitting places that they're not. I've been shot in the face, and it comes in the back. I've been shot in the back, and it lands on the face, and I survived. I've been raccoon. What do you got to say? <laughs> just yeah, just like you, Connor. I have noticed this ever since at least open beta. I get my ass shot and. I don't know, it, it goes up my ass and out my mouth, and then it hits me in the <laughs> chest or something. That happens all the fucking time. I thought it was some kind of weird piercing effect that the PPCs had that nobody noticed no. or something. But yeah, it's, it's fucking everything. I noticed that with It goes through rifles. your ass and out the chest. Alright, so they do mention that sadly they acknowledge that there are currently a few issues with hit registration on production. A few. <laughs> but they have been actively investigating it, and they have found some bugs, and they're currently being resolved. So we got to give them, you know, we got to give them time. It is a big, it's a big thing to do. Lag has always been a killer in every multiplayer game since they've started on the internet. We all know that. If I'm fine with any that. It's game. just it's happening on Assault Max. But also, they've been doing a lot of work in the background, adding telemetry for various systems, and now oh. have better information on hit registration to help catch any there. future issues earlier. So now they have um, things catching if there's problems. We've been doing a lot of work in the background, adding telemetry for various systems, and now have better information on hit registration to help catch any future issues earlier. Now, more telemetry is good for them because they can rely on it and they love their telemetry. But what this also does is this gives the devs earlier warnings for when things are not working properly. This are good things, but they should have had these in place in the first place. So, moving on from there, we have DX11. There's a big <laughs> elephant right there. This uh, They've been working behind the scenes to address the major issues they experienced when they first tested DX11 with QA. Now, you can tell us outwardly, but we can all guess that when they did toss in DX11, that it failed in a very big way because they basically didn't want to tell us anything about it and they haven't addressed it maybe once in the past year. So, 
they said that they have addressed all the big issues and they're looking at putting DX11 up on the public test servers shortly. So they're going to move it to production. So this is going to get fast tracked. Oh boy. Whether it works or not is a whole nother thing altogether. Hey Vass. Yes. Do you think I could put this new engine in a really fucked up car that doesn't run? Has no transmission. There's no steering wheel column. I think you'll find that that engine is going to be pretty badass, but the car isn't going to run because I have no wheel. <laughs> I don't think it's going to work. <laughs> Go ahead, Valkyrie. Well, you have to remember the car is also in beta. Um, I was going to say that... Um, <laughs> it's always a beta. <laughs> I was going to say, Kalis... beta? Kalis, you said that uh, PGI is probably going to fast-track DX11, although I don't understand how they can possibly fast-track anything that's been in development since around yeah, this time last year, really. Before, they weren't fast-tracking, so how but the hell... Let me ask, but so, so I'm wondering... Well, first of well, all, no, no, what no. the fuck have they been doing for the last year? And no, no, secondly, no. But by that, I'm, let me explain I'm something really fast. Let me explain. When I say fast track it, I, I'm probably getting it wrong because all these features are going to magically work by seven. Yeah, we lost them. So maybe, they maybe they're just, they're just lucky. It's by fast tracking. What I mean to say, I could be wrong. PGI might magically have everything timed out to the day on September uh, 17th to get everything done that day. I mean, they, they might magically have it done because they do have their telemetries and they know everything. So... There's that word again. Well, they use the word. We should use the word. We should, we should <laughs> use their I, words. I hate that word. <laughs> Darn it laser, go them. ahead. You had something to say, I, Laser? I, I remember maybe back in January, February, when they said, oh, we're finally starting to make the tools that we can automatically get all of these reports and... I'm actually glad that they have these things now because I remember when they first hinted at the public test servers back in like May and what I thought was if they can actually get, you know, all these reporting tools and the public test servers, they'll actually be able to expedite certain things that we would have back in those days would have taken a lot longer without these tools. So I'm a little glad that they've done that, but it's taken this long and they should have had this back when open beta started, not <laughs> this far in. I was going to say, in you know, in response to that is, you know, even if they are trying to get everything nailed down to the September release, I mean, they should have at least pushed this to the test servers a while back. And as it is, I do think that they are going to be kind of fast tracking things a little bit, which is a problematic issue. It's a problematic thing because, well, let's be totally honest here. Every time PGI has ever quote unquote fast tracked something, aside from changing the fucking number to make missile SRMs do two damage instead of one point five, tends to not work out too well. There is a further issue when it comes to fast tracking. The issue being, it's not just one big feature. We're seeing multiple big features coming in at the same time. That can't play nicely together. That's probably going to cause issues. So this is going to be a wild next couple of weeks. But uh, Rakum had something to say about what we're talking about. I kind of got, yeah, I kind of got two points. One's about DX11 and one's about the uh, telemetry thing. If I understand correctly, we have better telemetry now than we did back in the day, yes? Absolutely. Does that mean that their tel what was their telemetry back then? Was it just skimming chat logs and writing it down in notepad or something? They balanced by feel. Oh yeah, okay, that's that's wonderful. That explains a lot. Uh, with DX11, I s asked this uh, last night, and I imagine I'm going to get the same response. What are the chances that when they implement DX11... It's going to look like it did back in closed beta, and it's actually going to be pretty and look uh, nice again. Really low. You're yeah. lower than Vegas odds. Oh, ask PGI all about Vegas. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they know a lot about <laughs> Vegas. Maybe that's what they're trying to do. Get those Vegas odds. All right. UI 2.0. Hallelujah. This is their Jesus patch. This is the one that is going to solve everything, including it's going to get rid of the cadet bonus that we were talking about earlier. So we're going to somehow get a free mech, but we don't know how that's going to work. It's going to redo the whole front, and you're going to go full screen. It's going to do a lot of stuff, including a new mech bay and a lot of other issues. And then finally, <clears throat> they talk about gameplay in this technical update. It goes without saying we continue to work hard on gameplay in the run-up to the launch. As always, you can monitor design posts to find out the latest and greatest of what's coming down the pipe and also come participate in the public test, which 
provide a way to get sneak peeks at upcoming gameplay changes and new content. I have a few issues with that particular uh, comment. Number one, um, they don't give us much interplay. We don't get to get a lot of design posts. They don't. They just simply don't give us much information. We have to scrape and seek to find anything useful out. Number two, participate in the public test. Well, where I live is Pacific time. This is piggy time, PGI time. And they want you to come 10 to 12 and then 4 to 6. Now, if anyone else has a 9 to 5 job, you're not going to be able to test within these times. And I believe that they intend to do that to keep the load on the test servers down. And furthermore, they mentioned that they recognize that some issues, such as the recent issue some users have experienced with the VAST and the HIT registration issues, have slipped through. Uh, they, we can see that they continue to work to improve their process to ensure that this isn't the case and that these issues remain high priority to address along with the current investigation into 12v12 performance on live. That is the technical update. Does anybody have anything to add about that? I believe Rikum has something to say. It's not so much about the technical update, but rather with what you were saying with the 12v12 testing servers and keeping people off of it. Everything, really. Not only would it help uh, lower the server load by keeping all the 9 to 5 workers off, th that would generally be like the type of person who could give constructive commentary. Not some young kid who could be playing at that time. So not only would they be limiting the server stress, they wouldn't be getting nearly as much uh, bad PR. For Immaturity. The yeah, they'd be. They wouldn't. Yeah, they'd be getting no negativity. Audience who wouldn't like realize that? Oh, this isn't what people spend five million dollars on. All right, I guess we're moving on then. Yes. All right, we'll move to the August eighth hotfix. <laughs> um, it was a good thing, but I still feel like we kind of had to twist their arm over it. Uh, one of our members, uh, Transylvanian, by the name of Alex Wolf, he draws all the little comics and things for Kong. So if you've ever seen it, if you've ever seen Vast post, you know, I'm having fun or meta, and there's a bunch of PPC balls flying at the poor Centurion and his commando compatriot, uh, that's the guy who did it. He's got uh, more, more, uh, alias rat man. more importantly, yeah, everything people have laughed at for the past year, pretty much all of it's been. Any, yeah, any, anything you probably saw from Kong is probably Alex. And he's gotten a record 25 FPS, which he's never been able to get. <laughs> so, yeah, he plays this thing on a Nintendo 64. Not since Sweet. April. Not since April, is he? Bass? Yeah, I was about to say that he's playing on an N64. He's the he's the intended audience right now with um, super duper cheap computer and shit. And now he has playable FPS. I guess PGI did some good. He hasn't had this uh, FPS since April. So credit where credit is due. I still get bad FPS. All right, so uh, I guess we got a damage check, uh, damage texture tweaks. Um. I think it still kind of looks ugly. Yeah, it kind of does. But now you can turn it off so you have even better performance on your potato. Which is... <laughs> it's, I mean, it's not much, but it's, it's something. So it, it's, it's a step forward. Let's, let's say that. It's a step forward. Another give credit where credit is due. Raccoon? It helps some people. Yeah, with the uh, graphics quality and FPS... Uh, frame rates and whatnot. It has been a steady decline in both areas since closed beta for me and probably everyone, I guess. Uh, my max settings now look like high or medium settings from a month ago, and they kind of look like low settings from closed beta. And somehow the game manages to run worse at times. Yeah, I think a lot of it is processing optimization. The big thing these days is that they don't op they don't optimize for card or put much of the load on the card anymore. They just sort of sit on their ass and run it off the CPU. I don't know why. They just it's just how it Please is. Please don't do that. I know. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah, because there's no DirectX 11 and a lot of issues. Bass. 
Yeah, the way I uh, I understand it, I'm not really the most tech guru people person around, but uh, engines are built around some kind of foundation, and the one they are supposed to be using isn't there yet. So I have to do some kind of hack job to make everything run. Yeah, th- that's really what it is, because they're trying to cobble something together, and it's just not fitting. Yeah, let- let's move on to the next topic. The next topic is much more fun. Uh, this what topic is, it? is Exodus from the Inner Sphere. Vass, oh. would you like to take us in? I guess I will, since I'm the person who knows everybody. Uh, basically, things are not well in the Inner Sphere right now. They're uh, kind of chaotic, kind of gloomy. For instance, we have uh, one of the most diehard defenders of the whole game since, I don't know, when. When did you when did you first see him, Connor? You know him better than I do. Oh, Mac, <laughs> Mac One, that is. Mac when one. did you first see oh, him? Oh God! Uh, the first time we ever saw Mac, Kalis had sent us a link to someone complaining about ECM. Now, when ECM came out, we had been through so many LRM wars, LRM wars that we had we had it. Uh, we were done. We didn't want to see any more LRMs. So when ECM came out, we were ecstatic. We could brawl again. We could move between cover with our ECM buddy and hide in the cloak of skill. And street cats were down, that's right. A lot of things, it, it, it opened up possibilities to making time. money. Yeah, it was it was <laughs> ham-fisted, and we did give them shit for it. But it, it also but, meant we could I, I would cut Connor short as it doesn't go on a long story spree. There was a guy back then who made some funny videos. We thought it was funny. Uh, at the time, anyway. Then we discovered he's made a lot of them. He's been here... Since forever, he's been enduring all these LRM wars and ECM and the changes, economies, closed beta. He's been through all of this. And now he's pretty much quit the game. He's just... he's gone. Why his is name he gone, in the Connor? game... Yeah, his what name, was his excuse? I'm going to tell you everything. His name is Mac one and he's got his own little YouTube site called Max Corner. He's basically trying to be Total Biscuit... But he's got <laughs> the voice that makes him sound like he's some sort of Welsh gypsy or something. Come on, he's got a great <laughs> he, he uh, sounds evil like scientist Brad, voice. He sounds like Brad Pitt in Snatch, except worse. Like somebody punched him in the mouth. And he complains about the most rabid, inane things ever. He built a streak cat and a ton of LRM boats. When they, when they added the ECM patch, all of his mechs were useless because he was riding the wave of meta. That's his thing. He's always been riding the web of matter, but now after, he's, he's called it after quits. That, after that, he moved to PPC Stalkers. Kind of guess where this is going. They, they, they nerfed the PPC Stalkers, and then he complained. Then he, moved, he complained. then he moved to large lasers on his Stalker, and they, again, heat nerfed it. And now he's, like, quite literally, as Laser's saying down below, flipping shit. Yeah. Um, the last thing he did was he made a video where he made a very terrible build because he doesn't know how to make builds. And well, he, that, bitched. That's, that's he literally irrelevant. bitched through the entire video. Yes, been through all of this, and this is too much for him. Yeah. Um, he's this mad yes. guy. Yes. Is he just like one of the standard fair meta faggots that we had to put up with every day? Yes, he's yes. a typical goal. Yeah, he but he doesn't quit. know mm-hmm. he doesn't know anything about. The, the game, really, so he just follows what the others do. So now he's quit, and he's... Well, no, Laser, it's not just that. Like, it's a very big story. Um, also, we've lost Prosperity Park, and if you are involved on the forums, you should know Prosperity Park all too well. All too well. Well, my segment, because Connor will be offensive. Connor, tell me why, what Prosperity... What, what the... Mac once said when he quit. What was his ending message? You were there when he posted it. Oh, his ending message? Oh, yes. <laughs> yes, I can look it up. the best you can from memory. It was something about... It's on his YouTube page. It was something about he's quitting because of all the whiners and the missile dum-dums. The dum-dum rockets. He did not like SRMs. When the SRMs got burfed... Uh, got bur- burfed? Got uh, fucking buffed. He basically flipped out. He did not like it. He does not like scent bombs. He does not like brawlers. He does not like hunchbacks. No, I'm, no, I'm in the right era. He called them dum-dum rockets. Really? Yeah. Yeah, but that was a long time ago. I want to know what he, quote, what he said uh, in his last video. 
Actually, I'll just tell it for you so Conan doesn't go on more long rants. He's basically said that PGI has quote unquote fucked up too much and he's oh, not that... going to play until they fix it or the game stops being so boring and so, so hostile to the regular players. Oh, well, that's pretty much base. Yeah. Like, that needs to go without saying. He basically thinks that PGI doesn't know what they're doing because they're. Getting rid of all of his flavor of the month builds, and he that doesn't, doesn't know how matter to build. either. It doesn't really matter. The only point is, he's been around through everything, and even if he said that he's ma- ma- mighty mad and everything is shit and everybody's well, stupid, he's, he's been, been through a it. stark defender of PGI. Yeah, and now he's on gone. A lot of things, and now he's gone. Yeah, that that worries me. <laughs> you shouldn't lose your main defenders like that. Same with a certain mod named Prosperity Park, who has. I don't know the full story, but he's just up and left. So, see, it seems a lot of his uh, guild members have too. His last yeah. message is funny because that has uh, the line, might, might see you in space. Rather, it's actually see you space side. Yeah. Space cowboy. Oh, yeah. I think and, he's, you and think that he's going to I think uh, we should Chris give Roberts him a land on Star Citizen. I think he wants to become a citizen, yes. I think a lot of these people have. And on the Reddit side, as well on the small forums, and even on the big forum, oh my god, you didn't see anything there. A lot of people from various places have come out of the woodwork and just said, nah, we're gonna sit this out, this whole patch, or they've just simply said, we are, we're moving on, we're not gonna be playing Mech Warrior. Uh, really you got something to say? <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Go right. on. Okay, uh, with kind of ranting about Mac 1, I wanted to say that it's important that you set the precedent for what that guy represents. Because not only is he total gold material, he's the type of mediocre player that PGI wants to pander to. Because yes, he's, exactly. he's not yes. going to understand or really notice all the fucked up things that happen. He's just going to like, oh, I'm going to put PPCs on my thing. Oh, okay, I'm going to put LRMs on it because that's what's up. But, uh, he wants to see explosions and make some yeah, money, he and now he, he can't. Care. He just wants to ride whatever wave is going on, and he can't. No, think you you that. misunderstand. Uh, he it's can't not think. about. It's yeah. not about that. You well, people no, are stupid. I mean, it's not about meta abuse or anything. He's not it's a just totally that awful player. It's just he's mediocre in all aspects. Raccoon. That's the type of, Anyway, this anyway, whole thing anyway. is going to get edited out because you people are being so anyway, fucking ripped up. Whatever. Anyway, what I really wanted to ask earlier was, is it all right now? Is this the time where I can say I told you so to gold players? I don't like that. Uh-uh. Because, no, get, because what, where does it get us to... Oh, all right, it doesn't get us anywhere, I actually, but I I actually to. have a bit that I want to actually say. Um... Dude, there was the Goon Summit, as you all know. Uh, the Goons had this big thing. One of their their arguments for us to come and, you know, see their thing and join up on was, well, don't you guys want to tell everyone I told you so and rub it in their faces? We no. said no. Because that's uh, not we don't really care. Don't care. We wanted to have a good game. That yeah. was the goddamn point. I don't but care if I'm right or we're wrong. We're not here to be right. Good we game. just want to play a good game. We want stompy robots. We want to, you know, play I'm, a good Now, game. I can understand if you're kind of pissed off and you kind of do a I told you so thing. But it's, oh, I it, am. Trust me. It can't be a wide thing. And to be honest, ours was long ago anyway. Uh, I guess you could, like, settle long personal matters. Like, I'd like to figure out how to get my hands on Prosperity Park's email and shoot him a message of, well, was it worth it, pal? Bass? Yeah... It's complicated. I don't think anyone at this point is going to say this was worth it. Uh, not anyone involved in this whole project is thinking that everybody is more on the oh my god, what the fuck are we going to do side of things. I have another point before we move on to a different segment. Uh, the negativity outside the game, outside the forum, outside all the guild forums, is pretty dire. You can go to any... Any random forum, any random gaming site, like or blog. Reddit. You can go. Yeah, you can go to no Reddit. outside of go, Reddit. Outside of Reddit. Can, yeah, anywhere. Well, anywhere outside they, the normal. They're still clinging places. to it, but you could still Shut see up, it. Shut up, Connor. <laughs> the whole point is, you can go to average Joe's video game blog. You can go to say Joystick. You can go to Massively. You can read some 
some news they report on MechWare, of course, they report on the latest patch. Go to the comments, you have 99% negative comments, or just people have given up. They're like, yeah, there was fun ones. Don't forget not Destructoid. So yeah, oh, Destructoid. Yeah, Destructoid. Massively joystick, even something awful boards everywhere. It's it's the same everywhere. Doom and gloom. Vass, here's not the thing good. though. It's not just the news sites. It's the people, the friends talking to each other. And they're That's like, what he's yeah. talking about. don't no no news sites are one thing, but just friends talking to each other word of mouth is completely different. When you have a friend <sighs> telling you don't play this game, it means something. It does. That's another point. I'm I that think guy all we the might time. we might be at the stage where too many people who were involved in this from the start, the people who know everything, they are all too mad and too broken to you know make this work when release hits. That's that's we'll see what happens, but I'm not very positive anymore. Now go there's, on to the next segment. The Connor Sinclair. Yeah, there's always the big thing that we got coming up. Um hmm? Sure, these you know community sites they're reporting the doom and gloom, but here soon is going to be a big thing. Uh, Total Biscuit is finally going to come out of his corner and actually review and play the game. Along this, with someone else. This is a huge deal, and we talked this about kills how the pig. he played for a moment. Yes, and we started actually thinking about this. Well, why wouldn't he ever review this normally? Like in the Planet Side Alpha that I was involved in. It was really bad. The alpha was MechWarrior Online levels for about a month. Um, after that, it got better, but still. And and uh, Total Biscuit had jumped right on top of it, even despite how bad it looked and how bad things were. And he, he was on steady for over till now. And now he's finally coming over to MechWarrior Online. The fact that he's given it so much time before finally giving it a One look, year. a good look for release, is kind of a heads up. What I feel is he's waited and waited, and now he's thinking to himself, "Well, they have more than enough time now. There's no excuse." It's long overdue. Got to sharpen those knives. <laughs> Got to drag angry yo into the twelve mans. Right. I'm wondering if they're gonna crash or have severe crashes. Well, maybe we should, uh, you know, give them a little visit in the 12-man queue. A lot of people are talking about it. Yeah, there are a lot I mean, of people wanting to drop on those guys to just yeah. What the, what they give them the are Mech they supposed to be doing welcome. this, Mr. Connor Sinclair? Would you happen to know what date? Yes, it's August 15th. They're going to do oh. a 12v12. What I would say, attempt to drop on them as best as you can and give them a PPC Goss welcome. I completely agree. Not only with uh, Goose and PPC, but whatever you have. Yeah, machine guns, spiders, LBX-10s. Oh, you should take the shittiest mech you have and just wreck their face just to make them feel bad. Oh, splat cats? <laughs> That's not really oh, not even splat cats. Like, just fucking any light mech with an AC-20 in it. Welcome well, to Mech We're Online. Now get machine out. Machine gun spiders... The no point is, if you want to do some 12 mans on the 15th, that's that's probably your only, as we told earlier, that's, this is probably your only chance to get a 12 man ever, so might as well drop on the 15th. If you don't get them, then you get someone else. I just realized something. On the 15th, hypothetically speaking, since I don't think we're getting a new map anytime soon, we should still be getting uh, fucking Mordor as a high priority map choice. These guys oh, are going yeah. to be dropping in, well, Angry Joe at least probably will be dropping in with Trial Mechs. I want you to stop for a second and think about this and how bad it's going to be. <laughs> no Elite, no Masters, none of the extras. No double heat sinks, no fun allowed! <laughs> Actually, aren't they going to be at the bottom ELO level? Yes. Yeah, well, no, it won't matter. Trial Mechs with well. single heat sinks on fucking Mordor. 12 Watch. 12 is so empty it won't matter. Yeah, 12v12 is free-for-all. It's going to be... They're either going to get back, be in back cap hell and ask themselves, well, why did they do this? Or they're going to... Raccoon? Yeah, okay. I got another account to grind the cadet bonus. Got an A1 on it. Still stuck with the uh, single heat sinks. Mount Doom is... agonizing. I spend... I probably spend more time waiting to cool off than I actually do shooting at things. No, I do. I do. And it's it's awful. It's it's not fun. Bass? Yeah, about that. Uh, Mount Doom and single heat sinks. 
if you haven't tried, you probably should. Then you then you'll know what new players are experiencing. Just boot up a trial mech, drive it around Mount Doom, see how much fun you have. Well, I guess this is it for today, Connor. Yeah, I guess this is all we've got. Uh, oh, we had a lot got. more to talk about than I thought. Didn't have to. Pan I, out I'm surprised so. how long it took, and we even removed some parts for next week, maybe. Oh huh? God! You need to stop doing that. And this was Kongcast. Don't forget to play with Kong. They'll never Kong play strong. Us. Only a fourth <laughs> of us no play anyway. Us. If you can find <laughs> us. See you in Star if Citizen. If you can find us. If yes. you can contact For the 15 Kong. minutes of the day we do play, try to find us. Yeah. <laughs>